Straight repeal of Obamacare failed today in the Senate after seven Republicans joined Democrats to defeat it. The Majority Leader Mitch McConnell's final option now is to get 50 senators to support some kind of replacement bill. We asked the Vice President about the Obamacare repeal effort, and here's what he said. So you've all had a tough time. You've been working hard to wrangle votes from Republicans in the Congress. You cast a tie-breaking vote in one uh, yesterday yeah. on health care. The Wall Street Journal had a piece on Monday pointing out that members of Congress and their staffs in Washington have a separate arrangement. They have an exemption from some of the requirements of Obamacare, and they get a pretty massive taxpayer subsidy for their health care. It's possible by administrative decree to end this special treatment that members of Congress have awarded themselves. The president could do that. Are you all planning to do that? What we're planning to do is keep our promise to the American people. President Trump made it clear throughout the campaign last year that we were going to repeal and replace the disastrous failure of Obamacare. I mean, look, every promise that was made to pass Obamacare seven years ago when I was a member of Congress uh, turned out to be a lie. They said, you like your doctor, you can keep it. You like your health insurance, you can keep it. They said the cost of health insurance would go down. I mean, every single one of those proved to be false. And the president and I met just a few days ago at the White House with families that are bearing the burden of rising premiums and, and the lack of uh, insurance, the lack of ability to choose your doctor. Uh, the president's absolutely determined, as you saw this week, to continue to hold Congress accountable. And uh, we couldn't be more grateful for the leadership in the House that moved legislation to repeal and replace Obamacare. And, and we're grateful for the, all the members of the Senate who moved us forward. The debate is going on even as we speak. And, and we're why, not going to rest until we give the American a, people a fresh start on health care. I think most people would be for that. But why should members of Congress and their staffs have a better deal, not be subject to the same rules that everyone else is. Well, I, it's again, that's that's pretty typical in Washington D.C., isn't it? I mean, over the years, you you more often than not see one set of rules for the American yeah. people and one set of rules for the political class here in our nation's capital. And but as we move forward, the point is that uh, that whether the president makes a decision, it would be his decision right. whether to rescind that special treatment for members of Congress and their staffs. Uh, but uh, the, what, what we want is a health care system that works for all of the American what, people. What does, that, what does that mean? Does that mean cheaper coverage for people? Does it mean does. a larger percentage of the population covered? Does it mean better health care outcomes? If you could name the primary goal of the replace part of the deal, what would it be? Well, I, I think the primary goal first uh, is to give people freedom over their own health care choices again. Right now, it's amazing to think at the center of Obamacare uh, is, is, is a requirement that every American buy health insurance, whether they want it or need it or not. And if they don't buy health insurance, as the government orders them to do, they have to pay a fine right. to the federal government. Six and a half million Americans last year paid a fine to the government because their choices in health insurance they were being forced to buy were so bad. And I've heard from those families, the president heard from those families all across the country. So first is restoring freedom to the American people to make their own health care choices. The second thing is restore the kind of free market that will allow the health insurance innovation to happen to bring down the cost of health insurance for every American. Uh, Senator Ted Cruz and others have worked on legislation to, to give people wider choices. The president has determined before we're done with this process, uh, and maybe this will take another bill after this one, to give people the ability to buy health insurance across state lines. And lastly, what we want to do is, is end the, the one-size-fits-all Medicaid for our most vulnerable population. The president believes the time has come for us to give states the ability to reform Medicaid the way we did a little bit when I was governor of Indiana in ways that will better meet the needs of our most vulnerable citizens. So it sounds citizens. like choice is, is the key goal here, giving people more choice. Well, giving people freedom, giving people more right. choice, allowing them to make lower the cost insurance, and allowing states to innovate and to be creative about the ways that we can meet the needs of our most but vulnerable But if after a year or two of giving people more choices, millions fewer Americans had health insurance, would that be worth it? Well, it's, it's, you know, the very essence of living in a free society is people get to make their own decisions. But, but the president and I truly believe that if you lower the cost of health insurance, if you give Americans more choices in health insurance, that more Americans will choose, more employers will choose 
to have and to offer health insurance to their employees and, and have health insurance for their families. The, the reality is today, President Obama promised that, that health insurance premiums would go down by $2,500 a year. Right. They've gone up by more than that amount on average around the country. And, and, and it's hurting families. It's driving people away from being able to afford health insurance. And so the president and I believe that more choices, more freedom, more free market principles, and more state flexibility is going to meet the needs of our health care economy in the 21st century. So my last question is a political one. If all of that's true, why can't Republicans in the Congress see that? Why are so many saying, I can't vote for this version because I, I don't want to pay the cost at the next election? Well, I, I think the President and I are very encouraged by how many members of the House and Senate are saying yes. I mean, but I the mean, ones who are afraid, what are they afraid of? Do you well, think? look, the House of Representatives labored through a very challenging process. As, as you know, the President's talked about the fact that Obamacare is dead. This system is collapsing around us. You know, there's the old saying that it's, it's hard to turn a big ship at sea, but it's, it's actually harder to turn a sinking ship, Tucker, and that's what Obamacare is. And the reality is members of Congress have been working carefully. There's been very careful compromise from the majorities in the House and now in the Senate to move the debate forward. But it's all about making sure that as we transition back to free market, to a, a system of state-based innovation and reform, that we make sure that that happens in an orderly way as the president committed during the campaign and that Americans that are relying on health insurance today can know that there's going to be a system in place, the ability through tax credits and other opportunities for them to have even more affordable health insurance that they can choose. Mr. Vice President, thank you for that. Good to be with you, Tucker. Thank you.